Hi, this is Andrew Staten for the Gem Fan Journal channel. I want to talk about today about a Bruce Lee pilgrimage I made many, many years ago. Not that many people have made this pilgrimage because it costs quite a lot of money and now it's not even attainable. I'm talking about the pilgrimage to Hong Kong and then to one special place. That special place is Golden Harvest Studios. Golden Harvest Studios was not the easiest place to get to but they were quite accommodating. I got there in Hong Kong in about 1981 and in 81 you could get the telephone number for Golden Harvest Studios and you could ring them and you could ring them for free and they would answer but you needed the top guy to talk to and lucky for me I spoke to the top guy who was at the time Russell Carthorne. Every day I spoke to Russell Carthorne just about on the phone and I said is it possible for me to come and visit the Golden Harvest Studios? He said yes. He said but I have to find some accommodation. Every day I rung up, he said, just ring me tomorrow, just ring me tomorrow. It got to be the last Saturday I was in Hong Kong. And I was, it was the Friday of that Saturday. And I said to Russell, I said, I'm going to be leaving soon. He said, oh, okay, you're coming tomorrow. I said, oh, wow. He said, have you got somebody to come with you so that you get there okay? I said, yeah. He says, you know we are up on Diamond Hill? Uh, I said, yeah. I said, yeah, that's, that's great. So I took Johnny Lau, uh, who I was staying with, and we went all the way in a taxi up to Golden Harvest Studios. This was the first time I'd been to Golden Harvest Studios. When I got there, um, they just let us in. We went up to the door. They said, oh, yes, welcome, come in. And there was a guy there called H.E. Chu. I got a picture of H.E. Chu, very small guy, and he said he'd been in charge of the Daily Star or the Hong Kong Daily Star which is said had done many many articles on Bruce Lee when he'd been a, a journalist there. I said that's fine. So he started taking me around the whole of the studios. So basically I went up to the studio B1, B2 where Bruce had filmed in. When I walked in there it's just a great big dark room there was nothing in there, they weren't filming anything at the time, but these were the studios where Bruce had made his action movies, Fist of Fury, any of the internal scenes for Way of the Dragon, some of the stuff for Game of Death, but most of the time he'd done other bits and pieces in B1 and B2, the studios. The rest of them I walked around and it was fascinating basically seeing things that you'd seen in Enter the Dragon that you thought were massively large and really when you saw them they were just like little shanty towns. I mean I even saw a small little stream that had actually been so important in Enter the Dragon where Angela Mouse trying to get away from the guards um, and it was tiny you know if you looked up there was houses above it and stuff like that but they made it look like a shanty town. I went inside all the places, some of them looked like traditional Chinese alleys and other things like that, but, and I went into a room, and you will all know this one, great photo of Bruce, stood with a load of film cans and an editing room. The editing room was just as you walked in through the gate and to one side. There was the side where all the editing for Bruce Lee movies would be made, and I was quite impressed with what was going on though the heat and the, the humidity meant that the stock must have been had to be keep cool somewhere else because it would have just rotted away once you went into a modern sort of like entrance way the building was quite I would say well modern really it, it was not old or anything like that it, it looked absolutely just like an office suite I was then ushered into a small room with a Chichu and he sat down and said well really you've seen all the outsides of, of the studio there's not a lot but what there is you've got to see it. He then presented me with a game of death making of a press book which was basically um, I had a photograph of it from Bruce from game of death. It was great to see it and I'd never seen it before it was quite happy to present it to me and I was quite thrilled to get it. He then made a strange statement, he said, well I haven't got any more to show you, would you like to see a Bruce Lee film? Which I found was kind of a bit strange because 
I had seen all the Bruce Lee films and you know okay it was nice to think that I'd go and watch them immediately because I'd come from Great Britain there was one thing that the greatest Great Britain people had really suffered from we'd suffered from the censors the British Board of Film Censors had hacked away at Bruce Lee's films for years and even when I was there they were still hacking away at Bruce Lee films. I immediately flashed into my mind. I said, can I watch a film um, called Bruce Lee, The Man, The Legend? So he said, oh yes, just hang on a minute, I'll, I'll pick up the phone. He picked up the phone and he said, yeah, you, you can watch it. He said, but sorry, it's only in Mandarin. He says, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I says, I want to see it. I says, it's the film that was made as a tribute to Bruce Lee um, straight after his death. So he said, oh yeah, that, that, that's correct. He said, and I said, it never got um, a sort of like a, a big sort of like showing around the world. I said, it just stayed in Hong Kong because I think that Raymond Chow wanted to keep it to make Game of Death and use the footage then. Oh, he was going to make a better documentary, I think he said. So he said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. He said, but this is the original Bruce Lee, the man, the legend. This is where it gets interesting. And this is where it gets emotional. Underneath, I went down some steps, and underneath was the rushes or the viewing room for the films. So HE2 took me and Johnny Lau into this room and he said, will you sit in this chair? And would Johnny sit in this chair? Would you like tea and coffee? Or would you like tea and coffee and would you like biscuits? I said, oh, that'd be very nice. Tea, coffee, biscuits. What could you want? Bruce Lee film, tea, coffee and biscuits. So I said, yes, yes, please. But there was more special to come. H.E. Chu looked at me and he said, you know where you sat, don't you? I said, I haven't got a clue. He said, I'm in this little viewing room. He said, no, you're sat in the seat where Bruce Lee watched the rushes from all his movies. And Johnny sat in the seat where Raymond Chow sat next to him to actually converse about what the filming, uh, the filming had been gone the day before. At this, it made it more and more special. I was absolutely in my element. Then, of course, the tears rolled into my eyes. You might say I'm over emotional, but no, you wouldn't have been. Because if you had been in England or the British Isles at that time, you'd have really known why I was over the moon about what I was seeing. Yes, I saw every non chucker scene. In Bruce Lee, The Man, The Legend, at that time, the one that was the Mandarin version, every scene that had been cut from all the British movies was in this. Every fantastic kick, every time he brought out the non chuckers every time you saw something that was really special and being cut by the censors, it was in there. But also, there was one of my instructors in there that, okay, Let's put it this way, I've trained under him, I wouldn't say whatever, I've been on his seminars, so I'm not proficient as the instructor or whatever, but he has instructed me at some time, and that's the great guru Danny Nasanto. I was absolutely out, riveted out of my seat when I saw the log come out and the guy um, actually pick it up and try and wave it in front of Danny Nasanto. I thought this is the log scene, this is the one that I'd seen in Fighting Stars, this is the one that everybody had raved about, which was the prequel to Bruce then coming on with the yellow nonchuk, well with the whip stick and the double not uh, the yellow nonchukers. I was absolutely riveted and was crying with emotion because I thought this film needed to be seen by all the British people. Johnny looked at me and said, what's the matter? I said, if only. If only all these scenes could be seen by British people, they would love it. In the 2000s, thanks to Hong Kong legends, all those scenes were put back in. But sadly, the log scene has still not turned up. But maybe one day it will. And then you'll know why, and it's put together properly, how that is going to bring everything together. Hopefully those rushes that were actually sat there with Bruce and Raymond Chow, they entered the game of death rushes, 
will come through and maybe that will be something special for all fans to enjoy. I hope that would be something that you'd all like to see. It's not Bruce Lee, it's not Bruce Lee, it is Dan in a Santo, but it's still, it's really special and it was special to me. The day wrapped up and we left um, and it was a rainy day. Uh, don't tell me how I knew that, but it was an absolute rainy day. After that, um, we went back. I was absolutely enthralled. And like anybody who had been to Golden Avenue Studios, the buzz that you'd actually been to the studios where Bruce had worked was amazing. But that wasn't the end of it. Many years later, I returned and again did a visit. This time with Duke Poyer, a stuntman extraordinaire who'd been in quite a few of Golden Harvest movies and others and been an excellent stuntman, along with Mike Lambert, who is now absolutely in the epitome of one of the top guys um, directing martial arts action in Star Wars movies. And I'm so proud of Mike Lambert. But the situation, Jude was with me. And as we were waiting to interview Raymond, uh, Russell Cawthorn, as I had not met Russell Cawthorn the first time round, this was a special time. And literally, this time, I did get to meet Russell Cawthorn. The Golden Harvest Studios was still the same. It was still had the same feel about it. And they were still making fantastic movies for martial arts people who love martial arts movies. But one thing was a little bit more special. Every time I go there, there was that little bit. Jude was not happy with me, I will admit, but I couldn't resist. I am sorry. Who should but walk through the door of Golden Harvest when I was sat there waiting to interview Russell Cawthorn, but Jackie Chan. I went up to Jackie and as the thing when you're always starstruck, you go, oh, Jackie, I love your movies. And then Jude looked at me and said, don't act like the fan. But I couldn't help it. This was a guy that had actually been with Bruce Lee in two of his movies and had made a fantastic um, sort of like range of movies throughout his career and done so many reviews for Jackie, I was over the moon. So my second time at Golden Ava Studios, plus a fantastic interview with Russell Cawthorn, was amazing. Golden, Golden Ava Studios now doesn't exist, but there is still footage somewhere. Maybe you'll see it. And sometime you may realise how wonderful that little place was. It wasn't very big, but it was the heart of Hong Kong. And it was the place that Bruce Lee made the ultimate martial art movies. I wish I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you.